Alright guys, today we're going to be doing some trailer mods. The first thing we're going to start with is building something to keep the ramps from popping up when the car rolls onto it. Let me show you what it looks like now. Alright, so these are the ramps I got off eBay. I think these are like 320 bucks shipped. They're 7 feet long by 14 inches wide. There's like a million variations of these. There's like 5 foot, 6 foot, uh, one's without the knife foot and one's with the knife foot. This is the knife foot. It's just at an angle so that when you set the car on the ground, or the ramps on the ground, they don't pop up as much. So here's the current problem. There's nothing to keep this from lifting up. So what happens is, when, as soon as the wheels get on the deck, it pushes this down, pushes the truck forward a little bit, and then these ramps pop up, and then the trailer moves forward, and then they'll just come down on the ground. So it's super sketchy because you can't see it while you're driving up and it's very easy to just like drive off the ramps and have them pop up even from the bottom and then slam your car down and whatever. So we're gonna build something that'll keep them from being able to pop up but still be able to get them on and off. All right, so the plan is to weld this piece here. I'm gonna cut it in half so I can use it for both sides. Measure it out so that I can put it in the middle so that if the ramp's all the way out here, it won't pull up and then if it's all the way in here, it also won't lift up. I'll probably offset it a little bit to the outside because there's not going to be much that's going to be this small. So I'm going to get this cut in half and then start measuring for where to put it, clean it up and weld it. Alright, so this is 25 and 3 quarters. We're going to cut that in half. So if you cut 25 in half, it's 12 and a half. If you cut three quarters in half, it's three eighths. So then we'll add the three eighths and 12 and a half and that gets us 12 and seven eighths. And that'll be the center line here. Speed square and just draw a line all the way across. Good to go. disc exploding and I'll tell you why it exploded because I'm an idiot I don't have the right piece for this so when you try to tighten it down it wants to bevel the disc and bend it and stress it so I just tighten it, tighten it like a little bit snug but it looks like the bolt tightened itself up bent the disc and then exploded it so I'm not using this grinder again until I go find that piece if you know where to get the piece for this grinder, just the piece that's meant for a regular cutoff wheel, because I can't find it at any store, let me know, please. We're at least able to get the metal apart, so uh, that's good at least. Scary. So next step is gonna be to map out where that plate's gonna go so we can get it cleaned up. So our measurement here is 24 inches. If you remember, our piece is 13 inches. So I'm thinking if we start it four inches off uh, three inches off of this side here then go 13 this way that should be more than enough travel for pretty much any car it means the ramp could go as far over as about here which I don't think I have anything narrower than that I think that is going to be our best bet so we're going to get this area cleaned up so we can start welding the brackets on. Alright, before we start welding on the trailer, we're going to lay down a couple of practice welds just to make sure the welder's set up well and I still know what I'm doing to some extent. Not that I really know what I'm doing, but got an idea. Alright, not too bad for the first couple of passes. It was a little bit cold for this. Alright, 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and weld these out. Wish me luck. Uh, this is my first kind of like real thing that I'm welding that needs to look nice in his actual project, not something just for practice. So I'm hoping I don't choke. I am a little jittery because I haven't been drinking caffeine. I drank a Red Bull. Terrible idea. Red Bull's bad for you. First official real weld came out pretty decent. I haven't even wire brushed them or anything. Relatively consistent. It was kind of an awkward angle because I was like, I couldn't really tilt the gun back anymore. So it was kind of like, I don't know, it was kind of weird. Did terrible on this first one, but then the rest of these are also decent. I didn't intend to stitch it like that. I intended to do like stitch, 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 stitch. But then I screwed up on this one and started this one and then was like, oh, well, I gotta go with it. Uh, I'm gonna wire brush them and then move on to the next part of the process. I went ahead and welded out the sides too, just to keep from it prying up. Um, but even without the ramps, if I stand on this with all my body weight, it doesn't flex, which is the only thing I was worried about is that as soon as I drove over it with a car, it would like pinch the ramp, but I don't think that's gonna happen now. So freaking hyped on finally, you know, like welding something on my trailer and doing it myself. And uh, this is so cool. It's like, it's one thing when you bolt parts into a car and you get it together and, and it works, you know, like that's such an exciting, like gratifying feeling but when you like make something, not that this is any bit complicated and, and anybody could do it, but just when you like come up with something, cut it, measure it, make it, weld it, it just, I don't know, it just feels that much more satisfying. All right, so the next thing we're doing includes wiring and tail lights. All right, for this next project, we're gonna take these weld them on right here um, so they've got a hole drilled in them for the wires to go through so I need to clean this area up and drill a hole in it and then weld these on the reason I'm welding them so far forward is because you see people hit stuff with these all the time like the back of the trailer swinging around or people walking by so I figure right behind the fender will keep them safe and they'll still be plenty visible uh, that's my plan at least I'm not gonna cut this one off until I get this one on just in case something happens that's the plan at least Look who's here. Hey guy. It's Steven, you can't see his car because the bush is blocking it, but whatever. What up? What's going on? Sweating like crazy. That's what yeah. I'm doing. You too, huh? Yeah, I'm disgusted. <laughs> <laughs> Working outside in Florida life. Yeah. All right, Steven's wire wheeling all the flaky rust stuff off uh, to get ready for paint. I'm gonna go ahead and weld this slide on. Right now, I'm actually gonna weld that on. I got the uh, white bucket things welded on. Not the best welding ever, but not bad by any means, I would say. That's probably one of the better ones. 
the top ones are kind of rough. These are okay. I didn't weld the bottom because like, I feel like that's funny strong enough. <laughs> um, yeah, so before we put the lights in and wire it, we need to paint. So we're just gonna paint all the metal black and then wire it, put the lights in, trailer's done. Steven is doing his alignment for the event tomorrow. We're both going to the event tomorrow, which is exciting. Yay. Yay. Woo, I'm okay. driving. Well, actually, I'm not gonna tell you guys which car I'm driving just yet. You'll have to guess in the comments below. All right, I used my power probe here. Put this to the ground, because I knew that was the ground, just based on the fact that it has an eyelet on it. And then to determine which one of these is on all the time, like tail light and which one is like braking and turn signal. So I'm not doing a good job touching it. So you can see that one's relatively dim. So that is just on all the time. And then this one is much brighter. So that's gonna be our stop and turn signal. I've got a wiring diagram pulled up and it shows that yellow is stop and turn. Brown is just on all the time tail light. This one also has a black, so it's just on all the time. It goes on the little side here. So we're gonna wire them up. All right, I had to extend the grounds for these little corner lights because that white wire wasn't even gonna make it into the frame area, which is where I'm gonna need to put the ground. So I just added some wire to it and then put a connector on the end of that wire. I got these on Amazon for like 10 or 15 bucks. They're heat shrink tube connectors, so there's just an assortment of like everything between the little forks, eyelids, butt connectors, etc., and then you just heat shrink them down. Um, if you're gonna do any sort of wiring, it's well worth it, because you'll spend way more than that at like O'Reilly's. Just for like a couple packets of the really crappy ones. So I suggest just ordering a pack like this and you'll have it for a long time. All right, it's all finished up. Can you do me a favor, Steven, and turn the lights on for me? Yeah, you got a little friend there. Where? Oh, God. Oh no, he ran underneath it. He could have killed me when I was under there. Uh, there's like a little stick that you pull out on the far left. There you go. Yep. Lights work. As you can see, they have the little corner ones. For some reason, this one, the wire to it is constantly getting seven volts key on or off. Um, so it's staying on dimly. I'm not sure what the deal is there. I'll have to figure that out. That's why this one's brighter. But they work. They look nice. The paint looks great. It's like a drastic improvement over the rust finish that I was uh, using beforehand. And then, I don't know if you guys ever saw the wiring here before, but it was just a jumbled mess like right here. Just like zip tied to it or wire tied to it. So now it's got the proper six pin plug, so no adapter goes down and is like wire clamped or whatever the hell there and down there. I gotta tidy up that yellow wire, but that is for another day. All in all, very happy with how it came out. It's like a new trailer. I'm stoked, are you stoked, Steven? Yeah, uh, it looks good. Really good. <laughs> Honestly, I'm blinded. I was just, I was I'm blinded. just joking with but you. But no, it looks good, I like it. Thank you for the help. Steven's been here You're all day welcome. while I've been struggling with this. I kept breaking off uh, tech screws and then tried to drill out the hole before screwing the tech screw in and then broke the drill bit, like two of them. Then my neighbor Ozzy came over, he had drill bits, used those. It's just been, the last stretch has been kind of a nightmare. But it's done and we're going to the drift event tomorrow with it. Again, oh, okay. Again, guess which car we're taking. Try to guess what car it'll be. Oh, this thing's probably doing that wagginess. And say thank you, Steven, people, because he helped me a lot and I appreciate it. 
Uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, Steven.